Hello everybody, in this video the brilliant Dr. Abbas is going to take you through specific immune response and autoimmune diseases, the examples that you need to be aware of for your A-level biology. T cells and the specific immune response. T cells or T lymphocytes are stored in the thymus gland. They can differentiate into multiple different types of T cell. T helper cells, we use a little a T with a little H next to it to represent these. These release cytokines, which are a type of cell signaling molecule, and they stimulate B cells and phagocytes. T memory or TM cells, these help to provide long-term immunity. TR or T regulator cells. These actually stop the immune response, normally once the pathogen has been dealt with by inhibiting the cytokine production that drives the specific immune response. TK or T killer cells. These are going to do as their name suggests and they are going to attack and kill body cells that are infected that are displaying the foreign antigen on their cell membranes. So this often happens with infected cells. They will let the body know they're infected by displaying or putting those antigens from the pathogen onto their cell membrane. So then what happens is the T killer cells are going to release toxins such as perforin, which is gonna disrupt or break the cell membrane and therefore destroy the cell. As we said, phagocytosis is a non-specific response, but the body often needs more help than just phagocytes going around and randomly bumping into pathogens and destroying them. So if we have a large number of pathogens invading and therefore we're going to have quite a serious infection, then we need to recruit more cells to help with this immune response. So it starts with the phagocyte becoming what we call an antigen presenting cell, which is what we said. So it takes the antigens from the pathogen and it presents them onto its cell surface membrane. So it ingests the pathogen, it breaks it down, it removes the antigens and it puts the antigens onto its own membrane. This is what the T helper cell, which is the first type of T cell we're going to look at, the T helper cell will bind to that antigen with a receptor on its cell surface membrane. The receptor is obviously complementary in shape to the antigen, otherwise it wouldn't be able to bind. And this binding actually activates the T helper cell. So as we said, the specific response is controlled by the cell signaling molecules called cytokines. So one example here is that T cells and macrophages both release a type of cytokine called interleukins. Interleukins stimulate the clonal expansion of both T and B cells. So T cells and B cells are going to divide rapidly by mitosis to make a lot of them so that there's a lot of them present in the blood and in the lymph. And this is really important because we need to make sure there's many of them around as possible activated so that then they can bind to the antigens on the pathogen or on antigen presenting cells and therefore they can drive the next stage of the specific response. So once our T helper cell has been activated, it's gonna to start to divide by mitosis, and it's also gonna to start to stimulate other cells to help in this immune response. So activated T helper cells are going to stimulate or activate T killer cells. These are going to be able to go where infected cells are, and they're going to be able to destroy those infected cells, just like we were talking about with the infected cells being an antigen presenting cell, and they can kill them using various kind of chemicals that they can secrete, such as perforin and cytotoxins. Sometimes you'll see these cells referred to as cytotoxic T cells, and that's because they're releasing these chemicals that are going to be able to destroy the infected cells. Perforin, for example, damages the cell membrane or can damage cells walls and therefore it's going to punch holes in that cell and so the internal workings are going to leak out and therefore the cell will be destroyed. Another thing that happens is that more phagocytes are activated or stimulated to start dividing and being produced so there'll be more phagocytes roaming around in the blood and in the tissue fluid. 
B cells are activated and they're going to divide by mitosis and produce plasma cells and memory cells through differentiation. So they divide by mitosis, which is called clonal expansion, because we're going to get lots more of them, as we said, and then differentiate into those two types of cells to give us plasma cells, which produce antibodies, and then memory cells. When the T-help cells are also activated, we said they also divide, so they do, they divide by mitosis and they're going to form T-memory cells, which work very similar to B-memory cells that we're also probably familiar with, and they will stay around in the blood for a bit, but they can also stay in the thymus gland, so they can remember that antigen and then also be re-stimulated quite quickly if you get reinfected. So as we said, cell signaling molecules, these cytokines are really important and they control all of the steps of this process. And so for each of these, let's look at what type of cytokines are being produced and what stimulates them. So T killer cells are stimulated by a cytokine called interferons, which kind of attracts them to where they need to be and they're activated. More phagocytes are activated. So we said they're stimulated to divide and then there'll be more of them roaming around. They're activated by monokines, which are again a type of cytokine, this time released from macrophages, and they help to actually attract the neutrophils by chemotaxis to the cells that we want those neutrophils to engulf and phagocytose. So that's why they're really helpful. Monokines from macrophages are also helpful because they stimulate the B cells. So they help to stimulate and cause that differentiation of B cells into the plasma cells and the memory cells. And also, obviously, we said interleukins do this as well. So it's kind of like a macrophages and T helper cells are both producing cytokines, which are going to cause these B cells to rapidly divide by mitosis and start differentiating. So we need to know these examples of how these cell signaling molecules are controlling the steps and stages of clonal expansion. So we've talked about B cells being activated and being stimulated to divide, and this can happen in multiple ways. So they can be activated by binding to an antigen presenting cell. And obviously this could be T helper cells. It could be macrophages. It could be an infected cell as well or it could be that it comes across the actual antigen on the pathogen directly. This can happen if the pathogen can enter the lymph, which is what we talked about when we talked about the inflammatory immune response, and so therefore B cells and T cells will be there, and they have the specific antigen receptors on their membrane ready to be able to bind to that complex that's presenting the antigen on an APC or on an actual pathogen. So that point of binding to the antigen, because it has that specific receptor, is known as clonal selection. So we've specified and selected our B cell. And then it goes through clonal expansion, which is where the B cell divides by mitosis. So it makes lots of clones of itself. And then they are going to go through the process of differentiation. When the B cell divides, it's going to form a type of cell known as plasma cells. And all of these are identical because they're being produced by mitosis. And they are the ones that will secrete the antibodies. The antibodies will have a complementary shape to that specific antigen that was on the original B cell. When the B cell is dividing, it's also going to form memory cells in the same way we talked about with the T cells. These are going to stay traveling around in the blood for a little while, and then again, they can be stored in the bone marrow. And these memory cells are going to have this ability to, if they come across this antigen again, so if they're activated again by the help of T cell, or they come across this antigen again in the body from reinfection, then they're going to be able to start dividing really, really quickly to make more plasma cells to make those complementary antibodies. Specific response summary. Okay, so that was a lot. So let's go from the start all the way through just as a summarized version. So first up, we have the antigen presentation stage. So this is where the antigen is presented on the membrane of the cell, and that's going to stimulate or activate the immune system cells. So it could be an infected cell or a macrophage. Then we have clonal selection, which is where the T cells and B cells specifically with the receptors for that antigen are activated and they're activated by binding to the antigen on an antigen-presenting cell on the pathogen, or for example, a helper T cell combined to a B cell to activate it. 
Then we go through the clonal expansion. So we go through clonal expansion of T cells and they obviously divide by mitosis and differentiate into T helper, T killer, T memory and T regulator cells. Then we have the clonal expansion of E cells as well. This obviously happens by mitosis and again differentiation into the plasma cells and the memory B cells. And finally, those plasma cells are going to produce the specific antibodies that are going to neutralize the antigens on the pathogens. So they are going to be specific to those antigens on that pathogen and they're going to be able to neutralize the pathogen. And that's how we then obviously become immune to that pathogen because then we're going to have the memory B and the memory T cells which will provide long-term immunity. So if we get reinfected with that pathogen they will quickly be able to go through this process again from the clonal expansion stage in order to quickly make new antibodies. Autoimmune diseases. So autoimmune diseases are when the immune system attacks the body's own cells. This usually doesn't happen because B or T cells, which are specific to self antigens, so would have receptors for antigens that are on the body cells, are destroyed by the T regulatory cells or they prevent them from working by stopping their ability to release the cytokines to do the cell signaling. Antibodies from these B and T cells that are still activated are made to bind to our own antigens. So these cells that have these antigens on, which are the body cells, are then targeted for attack by the immune system. The causes are kind of really unknown, but we know that it's a combination of maybe genetic and environmental factors, but we're not entirely sure what kind of triggers or starts this autoimmune disease, especially if it starts later on in life. These diseases are usually long term and they cannot be cured. Some examples of autoimmune diseases include lupus, where the connective tissues are attacked by the immune system, and rheumatoid arthritis, which is where the joints are attacked by the immune system. Both of these examples of many autoimmune diseases cause pain and inflammation. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>